Hi friends, and welcome back Moronamites. As you're about to see, I'm filming this intro at the end of the day, which is why I look a little bit haphazardly put together. But I hope you guys still enjoy this half vlog, half still a baking video, and enjoy the content. Hello friends! Edwin's driving, and we're currently on our way to Orange Farmer's Homegrown Market. And there we're gonna look to get some rhubarb, some fresh strawberries, orange juice, and pomegranate juice. So wish us luck that we find everything we need. Otherwise this bake will be a bust. and bread in Orange County. Target acquired. So upon arrival at the farmer's market and looking at all the stalls, sorry if you can't hear me <laughs> from the music, but there's no rhubarb. So we're changing gears and I thought of the flavor sweet potato brown sugar pop tarts, which sounds pretty good. I think I'll use the Ruth's Chris recipe and I got the sweet potatoes. So we're moving forward with that plan. Farmer's Market Hall, we have pastries from Crema Cafe. We got a palmier, a cookie, and a little apple pastry. And then we also got some Lucky Habanero chips along with one of their salsas. Then we also have Ethan's progeny, his jalapeno cheese bagels that he made. Sweet potatoes for our shift in strategy for today's bake. Pomegranate juice that you guys saw. It's very wet from sunny cows. And then the last thing I got was a little Moon Mountain coffee and this is their chocolate, no not chocolate, coconut vegan Vietnamese iced coffee. brunch today we are having the jalapeno cheese bagel bagels <laughs> we're having the jalapeno cheese bagels that Ethan made from crema market along with some scrambled eggs turkey breast and tomatoes and then I just made some honey sriracha sauce to drizzle on top and then I also have the coconut Vietnamese iced coffee As mentioned, we went to the farmer's market to find rhubarb. However, there were no vendors that had it. So we had to kind of change the plans on the fly. And I thought of the sweet potato casserole from Ruth's Chris might be a good sub as a filling for our pop tarts. So this is gonna be a very casual video. I'm just filming this all on my phone. So apologies, there's no mic, no lights, no setup. So, and it's not all gonna be nicely measured out into our cups but I'll go ahead and show you the recipe that I'm gonna be using. It's gonna be a Frankenstein of different recipes to get this done. The first recipe, of course, is the Ruth's Chris sweet potato casserole. I'm not gonna use this crust mixture, just the sweet potato mixture here. For the actual crust, I'm using a King Arthur recipe, so this one I'm just using the crust recipe and not the filling. And then here I just have a mashed sweet potato recipe. Essentially, I'm just going to peel and cube the potatoes, boil them so that they are a consistency, which can be mashed. I'm starting off first though with the dill because that needs to chill. So I'll link this in the description so you don't have to take a screenshot or anything if you want to try to recreate these. To start off our dough I'm using just this medium-sized bowl and I'll be adding in two cups of flour, one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, then just gonna take a whisk and mix this all together. Now I'll be adding in 16 tablespoons or about 227 grams of unsalted butter that is cold and cut into little squares. And I'll be using a dough cutter to help meld this with the flour. Next, I'll be adding in one large egg plus two tablespoons of milk back with our dough cutter to mix it all together until everything sticks together into a cohesive lump. 
All right, I think we're at that point where using our hands is gonna be much more effective in terms of sticking everything together. So at this point, our dough is now a cohesive lump. So I'm gonna take a knife, divide it roughly in half. Cut that. Oh, it's buttery. <laughs> and then I'm gonna wrap each half in some plastic wrap and shape it into a rectangular form so that it's easier to roll out afterwards. Okay, so now we have our two little parts of the dough and we're gonna set these in the fridge to rest for about 30 minutes so the gluten can relax. So let's get started on our sweet potatoes and making sure that they soften up so we can mash them up nicely for our filling. So I've washed three of the beautiful sweet potatoes we got from this farmer's market and now I'm just gonna take a peeler and peel all of them before I cube them to boil in some salted water. For cubing these, I'm not entirely sure how small or big the pieces need to be. I think this size should be good. Hopefully, we'll see. And then we'll boil these in salt water for about 20 to 30 minutes, but I'll keep an eye on them to make sure that I don't make them too soft. Got a pot now, and then I'm gonna add in some kosher salt, make it seasoned. Put this on the stove to boil, and then I'll add in these potatoes and let them cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. Here we have our piping hot potatoes that just came out of the water and drained them. I'm not sure if you can even see the steam on there, but you can see the condensation in the bowl. So I'm just gonna take a masher and nicely mash this all together. Oh, that sound. Oh, also, sorry if you can hear the washer in the background. We'll put these to the side for now, and then in here is where we'll combine all of our ingredients to make the filling. To this bowl, I'll be adding in three quarters of a cup of sugar, quarter teaspoon salt, one quarter teaspoon of vanilla, but I'm just going to estimate. Uh, that's probably good. Then we'll add in our potatoes. Ugh, the bowl was hot. <laughs> it's gonna burn me one quarter cup of butter. Lastly, one well-beaten egg. Now I'm just gonna mash everything together. This looks very liquidy, and now I'm anxious this isn't gonna work well. Concern. We're gonna set this aside for now, and I'm not sure if it cools it. Hopefully it'll thicken up a little bit, but honestly not sure if it will. Also that little speck of butter, I hope it dissolves. We'll just hide it underneath, and hopefully residual heat will melt that in. So we'll set this aside. I pulled out our two doughs from the fridge now, and they're still a little bit soft, so hopefully I won't have too many issues rolling it out. Rolling pin, and let's go ahead and flatten this out. Hold on, let's get some flour. About one eighth of an inch thick. I'm sweating so much right now. Good thing I'm not on camera. I think that's about as thin as I'm willing to go here. I think it should be, what, three inches by four inches? Oh, that was not halfway. Okay, not bad. Maybe I'll Frankenstein a little piece here. Now I'm going to set these onto my baking sheet right here, just a baking sheet with some parchment paper on top. But here are the bottoms that we have currently. So now I'm going to roll out the top so those are ready to go and then we'll film them, pop them in the oven and then this bake will be done. And hopefully it turns out okay. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I have beaten another egg and the recipe on the crust side, so the King Arthur one says to brush each one fully with this egg before I put in the filling. So we'll go ahead and do that. I think this will help seal the pockets closed. And then we can use the rest of this as a topping to make them golden at the end. Here comes the part that will induce anxiety because it still looks pretty liquidy, so maybe I'll have to be very quick with filling and then putting a top onto it and sealing it so it doesn't spill everywhere. So I'll get my top half ready. Let's give it a shot and then we'll put this on top and then seal. Oh, oh, we already have it spilling out everywhere. Okay, maybe that was too much filling. <laughs> oh my God, a mess. Slightly less this time. <sighs> this is not working out well. 
Nope, I did the same thing. This is not it. These look so sad. I am screaming. We've already started, so we're going to finish the mission, even if we crash and burn to get there. Everything's a mess, it's all bad. Okay, now crimp the edges to prevent spillage, even though there's already all the spillage happening. All right, so here are the finished, well, not finished, ready to bake Pop-Tarts. They look a hot mess right now. Uh, maybe they'll become a little bit prettier in the oven. We'll see, there's clearly a lot of spillage, but I ended up, as you saw, just putting a little egg wash on there and then Edwin sprinkled some brown sugar. So once the oven finishes preheating, these are gonna go in for about 30 to 35 minutes. LOL, these are supposed to be refrigerated for 30 minutes before we go. I'll just throw them in the freezer until the oven finishes preheating. Here are the Pop-Tarts hot out of the oven. They look kind of still like a hot mess, but you can see the brown sugar did kind of caramelize nicely on them. They're still very hot. Taste test for these. So you can see the little Pop-Tarts are in the back, but we have one here for our taste test. Not as crispy as I thought, but the bottom is nice golden brown. It's hot. <laughs> gonna split one cross section so you can see all the sweet potato in there it looks kind of good smells like Ruth's Chris <laughs> sweet potatoes this looks pretty good okay all right this this time mm -hmm. I got mostly pastry in that bite let me take another one hard hot <laughs> I like the brown sugar on top oh they're so hot I think it tastes good the brown sugar was a uh... a smooth <laughs> Very good. It tastes pretty close to the Ruth's Chris one. Although yeah. it's been a while since we've had it, so could be wrong. But it tastes good, delicious, sweet. Mmm. That's really good. Yeah. Tastes like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thanksgiving in spring. It's hot, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it was a total mess to make and very difficult. Okay, it wasn't it difficult. Was just it was just overwhelming because the filling kept squeezing out everywhere. But overall, this was a pretty good bake. Maybe I'll share some with Ethan and Tara too. If y'all haven't, please like and subscribe so you can see more yummy content from this lovely lady and more fun adventures to come. I'm embarrassed. Goodbye. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as Edwin said, if you do like this content and you want to see more, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment down below for what your favorite flavor of Pop-Tart is. Okay, thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs> Pumpkin pasties, like in Harry Potter.